mean, right? Okay. Thank you very much. And this is a privilege and honor for Benedict and myself. Benedict, would you want to come here, please? To just... We want to use this opportunity to say thank you to the Church of Living Hope Christian Church that's for all this love has stood beside us and continue to pray for us for the calling that God has placed on our life and the blessings that we always receive from you. It is an honor and privilege for us to have you as partners and uh, to be able to work with you. Your sacrifice and generosity will be rewarded and God will surely provide for all your needs. Maybe spiritual needs, physical or emotional. Benedict and myself, we are blessed with three children. Do we have a clicker or we go from there? Okay. Okay, sorry. And uh, our first son, his name is Godswill. He's 21. He's finishing university this year. We have our daughter, Grace. Next slide. <laughs> Do we have a clicker? Or? It goes from there. Okay. Now, back. Okay. Never no, mind. <laughs> I think the, the boot is trying to figure out how it is. So let's, let's just go. And God has blessed us with three children. We have uh, Jeff Goswin, who is 21, Grace, 15, and Jeffrey, he's nine. And the most lovely part of this is these children are loving the Lord. We thought that because we spend more time on the field, they may be sometimes wondering if God is not stealing their parents from, from them. But they kept loving the Lord, so we know that you have been praying for us and keeping all our families in your prayers. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's Grace, and we have Jeffrey. <laughs> the next slide is what we are doing. Pioneers Togo, we work with Pioneers Togo, and uh, your support goes to Pioneers in Orlando and forward to Pioneers Togo and uh, part goes to us for the ministry that we are doing. And I just want to share briefly with you what your money is doing. And by the way, New Hope Christian Church is our main support church who brings in, we have 22 missionaries on the field under our leadership. And they are church planters. We have the staff, office staff that are leaders that help them. So. With your help and New Hope Christian Church, we have been able to plant 221 ch churches on the field, which we hand over 120 churches and our missionaries on the field still pastor and disciple 81 churches. And among which we have 115 small Bible classes, you know, which begins under trees in homes and become church, and they will be, have a pastor that will lead that. We have 3,500 3, leaders and disciples in those 81 churches, and all that is happening among 14 unreached people group in Togo. Those who have been to unreached people groups and some of these terrains are very difficult. But we know by your prayers, God has kept us going and things are moving gradually. 
The next slide will be. Maybe when you have time, you go through the slides. I will leave them with the church. <laughs> As, yeah, those are the informations that goes follow. Yeah, that that's the type of churches we have. You know, the beginning from under the tree, and you can have like a church building. That is one of the churches. Follow. There's a building that goes in. That's one of the church building. When we talk about the church, that is how it looks like in different places. And that is a village called Dadasukope. And there's a church close to that place that we just started uh, two weeks. They opened up two weeks ago before we left. And the challenge over there now is they don't have a drinking water. And water-related disease are very prominent in that area. Continue to pray with us as we seek the Lord to put a drain, a drain water well in that village so they can have a clean water in the village. It's very close to this. It's a church that's planted by this church. What we do usually is to be able to help the local leaders, train them to own the vision and run with it in their communities. So when we plant a church in a community, we train these churches so they can be missional. They'll be able to go to other villages around them, disciple the people, and plant churches likewise. With your prayers, we are not just working in Togo, but God has helped us to oversee all sub-Saharan Africa. In, so church planting within pioneers, all the missionaries from the US, Australia, New Zealand, Africa that are working in Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa, are under our leadership. They all report to us. We need to see their welfare, their spiritual life, be a pastor to them, you know, be parents to them because they are away from their parents. So the member care, all that needs to go there, even the security. So and all the time I have to be looking at my phone, make sure that because some of these people are in sensitive areas that you don't tell people about. So we make sure that if anything happens at all, we are the first people that they'll get in touch with and we'll be able to get the green line that they need to call, like the embassy, the parents, how do we relate back home with their families and all that. So without your prayers, without your support, our life is always in danger, but we know we have a church behind us that is praying for us and is keeping an eye on us. Thank you very much. These are some of the churches in Benin and others. Time will not allow me to go through all the churches that we have in different places. But I want to just go quickly down to slide number eight. If you can get down there, please. Yeah. This is children that my wife, you know, works with. Her passion, because I grew up as a street child, maybe we'll have time to talk about that later. Uh, we decided since 1999 to work with children that are vulnerable, that will be exposed, and children that do not have, you know, all it takes for their dignity. We want to bring them and show them the love of Christ and share the gospel with them. Because 99% of the people we have in prison today in our country grew up as street children. So, we said no more prisoners, so we started working with the street children to be able to help them, stop them going to prison. So today, by the grace of God, those, some of those children, we have one that we took in, he's a lecturer at the university in France right now. He has his PhD, we took him in from class one, and he is now a, a PhD holder in University of Nancy. He's a lecturer there right now. He has children that came up with their masters, and have some that are still at the university level. And uh, there's a program that is running in New Hope Christian Church right now called Love the Children. So if you want to sponsor a child, you can get in touch with uh, uh, either uh, uh, Tom Mancini when he comes this morning, 
or donor, and they are the people in charge of that program. But apart from that, we always have children in our home. As we were living, we have eight girls in the home who are older than this program, so we keep them in the house to take care of them. Those are the girls that may be forced into marriage, they have been abused, you know, we will find them in a difficult situation, drug addiction, and we bring them home and be able to help them to come out from that situation before we help them learn a trade and go to where they can go to. Next. So our home, we decided to give hope to the hopeless. So Benedict giving food to the children, school bags, and, you know, trying to help these children to put smile in their face. And not only that, that they will be able to have education and dignity is very important. So, like Christmas or holidays, public holidays, we'll bring them at home and get a good meal for them. And usually, over the weekend, so that they'll be able to relax and have some time with us before they go home. This year, we have been able to pay school fees for 65 children for them to go to school. And uh, the Loving the Children program is taking care of 53 children right now. So that is what God is doing with the children's program. So that is like food. We give them food and they go back to their various families, those who have relatives and those who do not have, because I'm a psychologist by background, we go and try to negotiate with the parents talk with them and try to handle that aspect so that there will be a kind of reconciliation between the child and the relatives so that there will be, we don't want to just create an orphanage where psychologically the child will grow up and say, I'm an orphan. So we rather want to bring a kind of reconciliation between the child and the relatives and be able to grow in a family structure so that the child can be, know members of his family and others. So that is what we are doing. So if you want to pray for us, maybe because of time, just pray that we'll be able to have a, a well for that village because that is very important. Number two, we need a center where we can bring those children because as I'm saying, we have eight girls in my house and then they are all living in at home. So imagine the style, the kind of life they bring into the house and that will be affecting the children. But we pray that we'll be able to get a place where when we bring those children from the streets, we'll have a place for them and help them from their addiction and all that so they'll be able to know the Christ and continue to do their homework. Those who will be going to school, some also go to learn a trade and all. Thank you very much for your prayers and God bless you. Now, back to the Word of God, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm going to tell you just a brief story. Some years back, we decided to go to a country called Sierra Leone to see there's a, a sister ministry that is doing church planting we always look at what they are doing and how they are doing it so we can train our people in different ways that they'll be more effective. And when we, I went with one of my colleagues, we landed at the airport, and if you go to the, get to the airport before you go to Freetown, which is the capital, you need to take a boat or a ferry or a small boat. And it happened that when we got there, there was just a very small boat that they usually call Pelican. And that's my first time to go in that boat. And what I discovered was, before we step into the boat, they put life jackets on us. They didn't just give us the life jackets, but they make you wear the life jacket before you enter the boat. And I started asking myself, what is happening here? 
<laughs> Why are they putting the life jacket on me? Why did they want us to wear the life jacket even before we step inside the boat? Why I just came out from the plane and they showed me where the life jacket is, if there is need, I can use it. But now they put the life jacket on me. Are they not sure if we can make it to our destination? Did they, are, are they doubting about us making it to the place? What is happening? So I sat down on that journey to get to Freetown in fears. I confessed all my sin. <laughs> I was looking at back and saying, my wife, who is, who is going to take care of my wife and my children if anything happens right now? I was gripped and hold my seat. I was looking very anxious. You know why? Because I swim like a rock. <laughs> so if anything happens, I'll find myself deep in the ocean. Beloved, if you are seated here this morning and you feel like I was in that boat, you are afraid. You don't know what you are going to do. You are in a junction. You are in a situation where you don't actually know where to put your head. I have a message for you. Be courageous. Don't be afraid. Be courageous. Our passage is taken from... Oof, it looks like I'm very loud here. <laughs> right? You're okay. I'm okay? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. And I'm speaking French, so hopefully you guys are not hearing me well. Our passage is taken from Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. Joshua chapter 1, Joshua. verses 1 to 9. Joshua 1, verses 1 to 9. Because of time, if I can get a fast reader, that would be great for me. A fast reader, yeah. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' uh, aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, then you and these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land. I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I'll give to you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river to the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. 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 Be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Do I not command you to be strong and courageous? Three times, this pastor sectors have been mentioned in this passage. Be strong and be courageous. Just imagine that you have a child, and in the evening you said you want this child to go to bed. I don't know in your culture how do you do that. You ask the child, honey, tomorrow you have classes. Brush your teeth. Take your shower and go to bed. Right? Do you do that? Okay. And when you say it, your child is still there with his uh, playing his game. <laughs> After 30 minutes, you come back. You look at him. Honey, I've asked you to brush your teeth, take your shower, and go to bed. Tomorrow you have classes. After one hour, you come back and the child is still there playing game. <laughs> what do you do? Turn. Let's be real. What do you do? Oh, you guys are very spiritual. 
<laughs> you are the parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take the, uh, game, game. the game away and <laughs> make and have them do it right then and there. Take the game away, have them do it right away. I was here, you said you picked the chair. Hey, if, if I can the chair, then I can the shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? You said, go. go! Haven't I command you? So I was asking myself when I read this passage, by the way, I love and I'm trained as a expository preacher. But when I was considering this passage, I don't know why, and last week what I preached, it's like, put all that aside and just be human. So if we need to do exegesis of this passage, I know you are students of the Bible, and you know how to go about it. But this morning, permit me. So let's just relate, relate to one another. <coughs> let's interact with this passage and see what is this passage telling us. When I read this passage, I started asking myself, why is it that God had to tell Joshua three times, be courageous, be very courageous. Haven't I, recommend, haven't I commanded you to be courageous? Have you ever thought of that when you read this passage? Did something come in your mind? I would just want to remember, remind you that Joshua was with his mentor, Moses. When people were criticizing him, Joshua was there when people refused to obey God, and they went and they made golden calf for themselves. Joshua was an eyewitness when the ten spies, he was even there himself, when the ten spies came and they said, we cannot go, we can't make it to the promised land. He knew how rebellious those people were. Joshua saw himself, he saw those giants. If you read the Bible, you know that they were not telling lies. They were giants in the land. Out of whom you have Goliaths. Those are the people that were on the land where they visited. He knew the challenge that was ahead of him. He knew how people treated his master. So when God was telling Joshua, do not be afraid. Now that your master, your mentor is dead, I'm calling you to step into his shoes. I'm calling you to take this role. I'm calling you to take this responsibility. Joshua, I put myself and I'm listening to him from, from, to God at that moment and say, okay, God, you are in heaven. The action is going on here on earth. You don't know what is happening here. Everything is fine with you there. But here, my boss was just about to be stoned. <laughs> Is that how you are going to be with me? You said you are going to be with me as you've been with Moses. Is that what is going to happen to me? Those are the tragedies. Those are the people calumnies. Those are the, the way people are going to challenge me. So Joshua will be putting himself in the shoes that are bigger than his feet. I'll be asking himself, how am I going to handle this? I just picture up. That is what I was just looking at when I was reading this passage. Said, Wow, you say you'll be with me, yes, but have you seen this? Beloved, this life is full of challenge. Our work with Christ, there are realities in front of us, situations that you cannot wrap your, your head around, you cannot figure out. But when you become a Christian, Bible said, I'll be with you wherever you are. But why this situation happening to me? Your pillows are wet with tears. You face challenges every day and night. Surgeries, accidents, situations. The devil is standing from the right and left. And you ask yourself, where is God? The reality is in front of you. Maybe mortgage. You don't even have money to be able to pay. 
You'll be asking yourself, how am I going to handle this? I have a friend that over 30 years of his education is still paying back his school fees. And that is a, it's a burden. You ask yourself, how do you handle that? Those are realities. I'm not coming here to tell you that you don't have those challenges. Even with your work with Christ, there are challenges on the way. God did not promise us that everything will be bread and butter. God did not say that things will be just be rolling. No. Even in the valley of death, our God promised that he will be with us. Amen. He just asked us to be courageous. The only way for us to be able to overcome is to dwell in him, to hold steadfast. We need to look upon to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. There's no solution anywhere. You can't do anything that is in the will of the Lord without having Jesus Christ as your Savior and the Lord. Amen. Beloved, change to many change in your life is difficult. Brethren, this world is full of challenge. We need to use the lens from the Lord to view what is happening. Otherwise, if we want to go with our strategies, we want to go by our human reasonings, our senses, which I don't want you to be done. <coughs> by the way, it's very important that you plan. My teacher in school says, if you want to plan, you need to plan like a thousand years to come. Jesus has not returned. But if you want to live, live like in this second, even the next one second, Jesus is here. So it's very important for us to do our planning. But we don't depend on those planning outside our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If we can look unto him, if we can focus on him, if we can hold on to the promises that he has given to us, he will never forsake us. He will never abandon us. I just want to let you know that Jesus, his eyes are still on you. He's looking up to you. He's opened his arm widely. Whatever the challenge, whatever the circumstances, the difficulties in your life, be courageous. <coughs> Maybe you are at the point that you need to make a decision. You are at the point that you need to decide either you should continue to walk with the Lord or you walk away from Him. I want to appeal to you this morning. There's no reason for you to walk away from the Lord. Come back to Him. He is your Savior. He loves you. He knows the challenges. He can see you where you are. He can find you. Even when we, we, talk, we look at the Samaritan woman, she didn't even have an identity. But Jesus left the 99. He left a flourishing ministry and he went to look for her and brought even the culture that was there where women could not speak to men where Samaritan could not have any relationship with uh, uh, the, the, the Jews. But Jesus broke that culture. Those are realities on there. But the truth is, when you have Jesus, he is going to transform your situation. When you have Jesus, he wants to change your situation. Amen. Life is not easy. The reality is just in front of you. But remember, his promise are yes and amen. Amen. He said that even if his prophecy tarries, it will surely come to pass. Whatever the situation you are going through, if you want to succeed in life, let this word not be part from your mouth. If you want to make it in life, if you want to succeed, let this word not be part from your mouth. Hold on to the Lord. Study day and night. Dwell in it. It's only that you will be able to succeed. Most of the time, when on the field, you meet, you face some situations, you ask yourself a lot of questions. God, can we make it? 
Why me? Why this situation? Again? There are so many questions that can come in mind. When your pillows are wet, usually we come to church in the morning with smile. But allow me to say sometimes we put on these fake smiles just to please people, to make people think that everything is well. And when you are just by yourself, when you meet you, when the rubber hits the road, when you are looking at yourself in the mirror, you know the reality in front of you. And you start asking a lot of questions. If this morning you are addicted to anything at all, if there's a situation in your life that you think there's no hope for you, if there's a decision you need to make and you don't even know how to do it, I have a good news for you. As the Lord has been with Moses, he promised to be with you. He will never forsake you. He is faithful and he watch over his word until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we bow in our prayers? <laughs> because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I'm here is gone. Because I know, oh, he owns my future. My life is worth a living because he, because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. for Benedict, just all they are, all they mean to us, and the privilege we have to support them. Uh, Father, as they have asked for prayer in terms of their ministry, uh, for the particular churches that need uh, a well drilled, I, I do pray that you move in whatever way to make that happen, whether it be finances or logistics or whatever it might be, for that to be accomplished, for that need for clean water to be satisfied in those villages. Mm. Father, we just pray you be with Pastor Francis as he is responsible for so many who, who have such a heart for your word, so such a heart for your church, so hard for raising up leaders uh, so that your churches are led in fitting ways mm. with, with right doctrine and right yes. truth. Yes. And so we just pray that you help him to be strong and courageous mm. as he faces the situations that are uh, around him. Uh, we do pray for Benedict that she seeks to express her heart of compassion towards his children and raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. We pray that you empower her and enable her uh, to, to accomplish all that she would seek to accomplish, to provide in, in the ways that she would provide, both emotionally, uh, physically, and spiritually for them. And so, Father, we just thank you for the short time they've had with us, but a blessed time in terms of just a greater knowledge of your work around the world, how you're working through this just one man, and in affecting and trans transforming a region in terms of just bringing the gospel of Christ and, and drawing people to yourself. And we just know that that, that model, that, that picture is just extended throughout the world. And, and it gives us a vision of a God that is greater than just North Kingstown or Rhode Island. And, and is truly international and worldwide in the way your gospel cannot be held back. Uh, the power and influence of Jesus just continues to expand. And we're grateful to be able to participate with 
the ways it's expanding through the ministry of Pastor Francis. And so, Father, continue to bless our time as we learn even a little bit more about this trip and uh, just the presentation that Tom will bring to us. And, Father, I, before I close, I also do want to pray for Tom and his family, particularly his son, Chris. Uh, for those of us who know uh, that in a very tragic way, uh, this young man, Chris, his wife passed uh, at the end of last week uh, through a cancer that was very aggressive that was not caught in time. And we, just, we just lift him before you. We can't even imagine uh, what it's like to be in that situation. But, uh, Father, our, our prayers are compassion. Um, our hearts just go out to him and just pray that as you are the God, who, the only one who can bring a solution, answer to that situation, uh, we just pray that, that Chris would just continue to draw near to you as you draw near to him. It's in your son, Jesus Christ's name, that we do pray. Amen. <clears throat>